Good morning, Eastside Online. Um, it's really cool to be able to be with you online for one of our first services for 2021. Happy New Year. I uh, am a pastor here at Eastside. My name is Jesse, and I just have a little bit of information for you. The first thing is we have a connect card because we want to connect with you. You can go to myecc.co.za and you can find our connect card there, or a link should pop up on your screen where you can click that link and you can fill out a connect card. Now, this is for people who uh, want to know something about Eastside. If you have any questions about life groups, if you have any questions about what we stand for as a church, maybe you'd like to let us know um, about some of the things that God is doing in your life or some of the things that you really would like us to pray with through with you um, you can fill out the connect card and we will take it on ourselves to get in touch with you you know last year we as a staff just to kind of end off the year we sat and we reflected on lockdown and what ministry has been like uh, last year throughout that season and we were just blown away by the way that God specifically provided in the little things. We spoke about how God had come through on so many different levels, but the way that He cared enough to provide in ways that we never thought that He would provide. And I know that for a lot of you, we've heard some amazing things from you of the way that God has come through in some of the most amazing ways that just leave you in awe of Him. Well, I wanna really challenge you this morning. Won't you give? You know, it's been such a journey through COVID and through the global pandemic where God has been so good to us as a church, but also you've been a part of the mission that God is doing here on earth and you have empowered us to be able to help other people, to be able to serve other people, to be able to come alongside other people and kind of allow them to worship in the comfort of their own home. I really wanna challenge you this morning, won't you consider giving? Why don't you consider giving back to, to Eastside because of who God has been to you and because of how faithful God has been. Because of the glory and the majesty of our God that He would infiltrate the smallest areas of our lives and He would come through and He would provide because He is our provider. I really wanna encourage you to give this morning because of that. Focus on that. Focus on who God is and what God has done for you and give from that place. The banking details will pop up on your screen. Um, the banking details are also on our website. You can go to myecc.co.za and you can find all of that information there. Um, you can also give via SnapScan. I'm gonna pray for the offering and then we're gonna go into an amazing time of worship where I'm really praying and trusting that God will infiltrate your homes and change your world. So let's pray together. Jesus, we love you and we thank you that we as people have the opportunity to be able to give to partner with you and partner in your mission, Jesus. I pray that you would take what we give now. Would you give us as people generous hearts to be faithful what you've called us to. Jesus, we love you and we're doing this for you. It's in your name that I pray this, Jesus. Amen. Your love so great, Jesus in no thing. I've seen a limbs of your heart a billion years. Still I'll be singing. Can I praise you enough? Can I praise you enough? You are the Lord Almighty, outshining all the stars in glory. Your love is like the wildest ocean, oh, nothing else compares. Creation calls all to the Savior. We are alive for your praise in earth and sky. No one is higher. God of wonders, you reign. Our God of wonders, you reign. You are the Lord. You are the Lord Almighty. Outshining all the stars in glory. Your love is like the wildest ocean Oh, nothing else compares 
has to retreat Just one touch I feel the presence of heaven Just one touch My eyes are open to see My eyes can hard but believe There's nothing that our God can do It's not a mountain that the name that makes a way there's nothing that our God can do just one word you hear what's broken inside me oh you receive the healing Jesus just one time and you revive every dream just one touch just one touch Feel the power of heaven. Just one 
just one touch. My eyes are open to see. My heart can't help but believe. There's nothing that our God can do. There's not a mountain that He can move. No praise a name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. prison wall he can't break through no praise a name that makes a way there's nothing that I've got can do oh. Oh, 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 oh. I will believe for greater things no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all agree. There's no power like the power of Jesus. I will believe for greater things. There's no power like the power of Jesus. Let faith arise, let all the breeze. There's no power like His power. There's nothing that our God can do. It's not a mountain that He can move. Praise a name that makes a way. There's nothing, there's nothing, there's nothing. Oh, there's nothing that our God can do. It's not a prison wall He can break through. But praise a name that makes a way. There's nothing that our God can do. at his voice trembles at his voice how great is our God sing with me how great is our God oh we'll see how great how great is our God Age to age he stands And time is in his hands Beginning and the end Beginning and the end And God is three in one Father, Spirit, Son The Lion and the Lamb, the Lion and the Lamb, how great, how great is our God, sing with me, how great is our God. 
Good morning, everyone. Um, Well, here we are, 2021, the first Sunday of 2021. And um, we would have thought at the end of 2020 that we would be entering into another year like this of many, many of us having concerns and worries about this year as we did last year. But just one thing that is true. I just want to say this to you, that God is faithful. As He carried us through 2020, He's going to carry us through this year. We're going to trust Him for much, much greater things, more amazing things. And, um, but I have a challenge for you before Jesse comes up to speak. Um, it's become very clear that we, we are going to have to own our own spiritual walk in 2021. And so... 
I want to put a challenge out there for you, and then I want to make a commitment. The first, the first thing is the challenge. I want to challenge you to take your spiritual walk with God this year very, very seriously. Um, the second challenge I want to put out there for you is, as we have realized in now, in December, at the end of December, it's going to continue to be complicated to connect with other people. And I want to challenge you to be intentional and have a strategy in your mind about connecting with significant people in the appropriate way so that you don't feel isolated in any way. I can't do that for you. The pastoral staff here can't do that for you. And um, so own your own walk with God. Make sure that you connect with other people. The third thing I want to challenge you to do for 2021 is to reach out to people who, have, who might need your help. Ask God, beginning of this year, ask God how God can use you or your family just to be a, a source of encouragement to other people. Um, and here's our commitment to you as a church. Um, as pastors, we're going to do everything within our power to bring you a word from the Lord every week. Um, whether we are locked down or whether we are not locked down, we are going to advance the kingdom of God and we're going to do everything in our power. We'll pray for you. We'll spend time in God's word. We'll bring you a word from the Lord so that this year could re would be a year of hope and a year of encouragement to you. Okay, so just that little challenge out there for you before Jesse comes to speak. Hey, um, there are a number of people. It's becoming clear that, that this virus is going to be around. There are a number of people right now within East Side struggling the virus. So I want to ask you guys to continue to pray. Be part of the prayer group. Let's pray this thing through. Let's get through this thing and trust God for some amazing things on the other side. Um, before I pray for you, Jesse's going to come up to preach in a little while. And I don't know if you guys noticed, those of you who are connected to social media, that Jesse and Kaylin got engaged um, over, what, two weeks ago, I think it was. And uh, we celebrate with him and with Kaylin. And um, so why don't I pray for you guys as you go into the new year. And we'll pray for them as a couple as he comes up to preach. Father God. Thank you that nothing, uh, we worship you as the God, the, the mighty God that Jason spoke about several weeks ago, the God who is greater than the so-called Superman or the other superheroes of the day. You are the eternal God. You are the only all-powerful one. And so we come to you at the beginning of another year, and we pray, Lord, that you would come, you would settle our hearts. Give us your peace, and Lord, that you would provide for us as we go into this year. Um, God, I pray that you put a sense of expectation in our hearts for what it is that you want to do for us and through us in this coming year. I pray for those people in Eastside who are going through incredible difficulties at this point in time, um, whether it be financial, whether it be illness, or having family members in hospital and so on. We commit them all to you, Lord, and ask that you would do something amazing. Heal them, Lord. Heal them. Put a song of hope on, on their mouths so that they would, they would feel it in their hearts. And then for Jesse and for, for Kaylin, Lord, as they start 2021 as an engaged couple, we pray a blessing on them and pray that their marriage would be blessed beyond what they can bear, that, they would, that rivers of living water would flow out of them. And I pray that for our church, that rivers of living water will flow from this church in the year that lies ahead, in Jesus' name. So just as Jesse comes up, Debbie and I would love to just wish you guys all the best for 2021. And I believe God is going to do way more than what we could think or imagine in this year that lies ahead. The Lord bless you guys. Good morning, church, and uh, happy new year to everybody. I love the idea of a new year. I love the idea of new beginnings, a fresh start from everything that has been, and we have made it to 2021. There's one thing, though, that I must be honest, I really don't enjoy about new year, and that is the new year's 
resolutions. Now, I'll tell you why. First of all, because I just frustrate myself so much when I try to implement these New Year's resolutions and I continuously fail time and time over. And what happens is I end up getting more frustrated with myself than I was the previous year about the fact that I actually wanted to change and I wanted to put these things in place in my life. And I know for a fact that I'm not the only one that goes through these things. Well, first of all, let me tell you how I've attempted and failed. I remember I tried to learn how to play the piano. I really wanted to, I just thought piano sounded beautiful and it looked so cool. So I was like, I'm gonna try to play the piano. I wasn't interested in learning any of the keys. More often than, than not, I was actually just interested in learning how to play and learning how to play really well. That lasted about two weeks. I remember I wanted to learn how to play the ukulele and so I was really inspired by the song and I learned the song called Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And uh, I learned the song and I never touched the ukulele ever again. On a more serious level, I tried to um, not watch anything on TV or not watch any series or Netflix binge before um, it got close to my bedtime. So what I tried to do was I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna start reading a book before I go to bed or I am gonna listen to an audio book as I doze off and fall asleep. If I'm honest with you, that lasted about three days. Now, I, I give you the right to judge me because that is in fact pretty sad, but the moral of the story is that I'm no good at these New Year's resolutions. And according to Forbes, studies show that less than 25% of people actually stay committed to their resolutions after 30 days. And only, listen to this, only 8% of people actually follow through with them. So you got a 90 plus percent chance of failing if you are trying to attempt and follow through with a New Year's resolution. Now that's just crazy. I, I know we've all tried them. We've all, we've all jumped on the bandwagon of it's a, it's a new year, it's a new me, I'm gonna do more stuff, I'm gonna do this in the next year and I'm gonna do that in the next year because we've all wanted to change, we've all wanted to better ourselves, but you know just as well as I do that Sometimes it just doesn't go as planned, and we actually don't follow through on these things. You know, what this shows about us as humanity and as people is we want to better ourselves. We want to get better. We want to do well with the life that we have been living. But you see, there's a variety of reasons that we fail at these New Year's resolutions. It could be that you just don't have time for whatever you're trying to change. In the new year, you might just not have time to do these things. It could be that you have had a rough year and you've had a lot of emotional things going on. It could be that you've fallen into tragedy or something really bad has happened in your life and you haven't been able to follow through. It could be that you weren't emotionally ready. It could be that you were actually just too lazy and didn't care enough to continue with the resolution. You could have really wanted to go to gym and you could have got stuck in gym at January and then February, you know that you did not continue or you didn't have the support and the list can go on and on and on about the reasons that we failed at following through on these New Year's resolutions. When was the last time that you heard someone say this year, instead of doing more, instead of adding something to my list, instead of trying something that I'm probably not going to get right at least the first time, I'm going to slow things down. When was the last time you heard someone say, my New Year's resolution is I'm actually gonna take stuff off my plate as opposed to adding things on to my long list of to-do list with my crazy and very intense life? When was the last time you heard someone say, actually, I'm choosing to slow down this year as my New Year's resolution? It, it, wouldn't, it would definitely be out of the ordinary. It wouldn't be normal. You know, I wonder if, if we had Jesus with us, wherever you're joining from, you might be in your living room, in your bedroom, in a coffee shop, what, wherever. If you had Jesus sitting with you, I wonder if you would ask Jesus, Jesus, what resolution do you think I should have? I wonder if he wouldn't say to us that very thing. Hey, this year I actually want you to slow down a little bit. This year I want you to take a few things off your plate. This year I want you to set aside time to sit in silence and hear from me. This year, I want you to slow things down because you are not coping and you're definitely not hearing from me. What if Jesus was sitting with us? What would he say? I think Jesus wants to speak into this this morning. I really believe it. I sat before God and I prayed and I said, Lord, what do you want me to say to your church? So I believe that God has something for us this morning. So if you have your Bible, you can go ahead and grab it. 
Um, I'm going to have the scripture pop up onto the screen. I'm reading from the NLT version, Matthew 11, verse 27 to 30, because I really believe that if we take hold of what Jesus, in, in the words of Jesus in this passage, I think our life can be different. And we won't set ourselves up for failure, but rather we'll set ourselves up for transformation and growth and something so much more powerful than we ever imagined. So let's read together. Uh, Matthew 11, verse 27 to 30. My Father has entrusted everything to me. This is Jesus speaking. No one truly knows the Son except the Father, and no one truly knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal to Him. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and the burden that I give you is light. Now this is quite a well-known passage among Christians in the sense that if you were a Christian, you've heard this passage before. If you've heard about anybody speaking about rest or coming to Jesus, you've heard this exact passage. If you've been following a Bible plan or new version, you would have heard this passage before. But I think that God wants us to hear it again. This morning, I think that God wants us to hear it again, and He wants to speak into the place that we're at. And so what I've done is I've, I've, I've summed up a couple of thoughts from this passage that I think is really important for us to grasp if we want to set ourselves up for success in 2021. And the first thing is in every season, which should be on your screen, Jesus is continually inviting you to a deeper rest. You see, the reality is for us as people that we need to notice that Jesus says, come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens. Jesus is literally inviting people to himself. He is saying, whoever you are, if you're carrying something, if you're struggling, come to me. Jesus isn't calling people who think that they have it all together. Jesus isn't calling people who act like they are the best people um, out there. Jesus is calling the people who are struggling. Jesus is calling calling the people that have is calling the people rather, um, calling the people that have have struggled and have found the promises of the culture to be false and a lie and um, unsatisfying. Jesus is calling the people that are weary and weighed down by the realities of life. And you ask yourself, well, what would these burdens be? I would argue that these burdens could be the things of the world. They could be the struggles that we go through, the experiences that we share and that we hold on to, the tragedies that come about. But I could also argue that these burdens could in fact be the barriers and the expectations that we place on ourselves as people. The context of the passage here, in fact, is Jesus is speaking into um, the reality of the day and he's speaking to people who have been burdened by religion. People who have been held down and weighed down by these elements of some kind of religion that imply that if they try their hardest, if they try to fulfill all of this and fulfill all of that, they would perhaps achieve the presence of God. That they would find God and they would see God through all of these things that they do. And so Jesus was speaking into these people and he was saying, I know that you think that these expectations are unrealistic. Come to me. I know that you're burdened. I know that you're weary. Come to me and I will give you rest. You see, what we do is we place these unrealistic expectations on ourselves. Even today, what we think we're meant to do, who we think we are meant to be. And so that's why we come up with these resolutions and these attempts to change ourselves and to fix ourselves because we want to grow into people that God calls us to. We want to change. We want to be better. We want to be success stories. The church, the reality is that we all need to be transformed, but the idea of us trying to change ourselves is physically draining, and it's emotionally life-stealing. It's a process that almost destroys us, and that's why Jesus is calling out, and he's saying, the weary, come to me. The people that are tired, come to me. The people that are weighed down by life, come to me. That's a hard reality that religion brings to us. It's this idea that you do this and you do that and you jump through these loops and you jump over those holes and eventually you'll get it right. But that is just not the case. We have these New Year's resolutions where we're trying and we're trying and we're trying. 
And Jesus says, let me take that from you. That which you've got on your shoulders, let me take that from you. I've got something so much better. And when you take it, I promise you now that you will not know what hit you when you realize and find out and discover the rest that I promise to you. Jesus is saying, come, I'll take that which you're trying to do, that, that which is fake, and I'll give you something real. I'll give you a relationship. I'll give you love. Wherever you find yourself, this is for you. No matter the season that you're in, no matter where you think your life is heading, this is for you. Jesus says that God has entrusted everything to him. This process of saving humanity, God entrusted that to Jesus. And Jesus is saying, come, let me save you. Let me hold you. Let me take care of you. This invitation disarms the burdens that keep us away from God. We're in a level three South African lockdown. We have things going on that very few people can actually understand. And I know for a fact that wherever you are sitting this morning, I know that you're carrying something. I know that you got a weight on your shoulders. And Jesus says, come, let me take that from you. You see, there's no final destination here. Jesus is inviting everybody to a journey of healing. It's not a place where you can get to or rather where you, it's something that you can achieve where other people would look at you and you can say, well, I finally found this rest that has been spoken about. But it's a continual thing where Jesus calls you and you approach Jesus and you accept his invitation and you come to him and you give him your burdens and he carries them for you. And he gives you rest. But Jesus, as I said, is continuously calling you to a deeper rest where you learn and you grow and you understand God and you understand Jesus and you allow him to do work in your heart because that's what he offers you and is only him that can offer this true kind of rest. Jesus takes these thoughts that we have of, man, I didn't get it right again. I failed again. I couldn't get that right last year. This sucked and that happened and this and that and this and that. Jesus confronts those thoughts with hope. And he confronts those thoughts with healing and with the salvation power that only comes from him. And he says, hey, I will give you rest. I will help you through that. I will help you to be who God has created you to be. That's what Jesus does. And the second thing that I got was Jesus wants to bring transformation into your life his way. You know, we know this thing is a journey because Jesus says, let me teach you. Isn't it crazy that the creator of heaven and earth says, let me teach you as if Jesus needs to ask us permission Jesus knows that we're going to approach him longing for the relief from the burdens that we carry he knows that he knows that we have our own way of doing things and so Jesus says let me teach you because more often than not what we do is we think that our ways are the ways of Jesus and so we actually tell Jesus what to do as opposed to just letting him do his work within us. Jesus wants to show you a better way. Jesus wants to show you his way because Jesus is calling you to find something more, to find something deeper, to find something more truthful. Jesus wants to transform your life. And so he's saying, I have a way of doing things that are not your way of doing things. But if you let me, I will teach you. If you let me, I will transform you. If you come to me and you accept my invitation and you allow me to do what only I can do, things will never be the same for you. What if Jesus wasn't calling you this year to do more, but rather to do less so that you can do more, if that makes sense? Jesus is so much more concerned with this process of transforming you and you coming to him and accepting the invitation than he is about you actually following the rules and trying to do things in your own strength and trying to get things right. Because we know who Jesus is. We know that he is the, the bottom line of what it means to be saved by God and to know God. One of my favorite parts of this passage where Jesus says, I am humble and gentle at heart. Again, it is, it is so disarming. Jesus knows our insecurities. He knows the things that are going to come up when we come to him and when we approach him. And so Jesus says, I'm humble and I'm gentle. He reminds us in the season that he is still gentle. He won't force you to do anything that you yourself don't actually choose to do. But he also isn't prideful. I love the way that Jesus says that. 
the creator of heaven and earth that says to us, I'm humble and I'm gentle. If you've been around a humble person, it is a pleasure and a joy to be around humble people. It's wonderful. And they're sinful people. Can you imagine someone who is perfectly humble? Someone who gently and quietly and subtly teaches you if you'll let him. And so that's what Jesus does if we let him. What about if your New Year's resolution was rest? That's a bit weird, isn't it? If you think to yourself, well, what is that going to do for me? How is that going to be productive? How is that going to help me to achieve the things that I feel like I really need to achieve? How is that going to take me closer to where I want to be? Jesus is far more concerned about you coming to him and him working this process and him teaching you what real rest is than he is, that the th- than he is about the things that you think are so important. Jesus is calling you to a real rest, a deeper rest, a kind of rest that brings transformation into who you are and helps you to be who God has called you to be. And the third thing, Jesus wants to show you how you can enjoy God. Jesus says in John 15 verse 5, Yes, I am the vine and you are the branches. Those who remain in me and I in them will produce much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. This passage just feeds into this idea that Jesus is calling us to come to him. He calls us to someone to be so much deeper in our relationship with him as we approach Jesus. But he wants to show us who God is. He wants to reveal our heavenly father to us. And this language is so beautiful because it says, apart from me, you can do nothing. How sobering is that thought knowing that, yes, we can do things in our lives, And we can think that we've achieved great success, but if it's outside of Jesus and it's outside of the source of life that only he can offer, it doesn't really have much significance. That's why Jesus invites us to come to him. It's a real life invitation. You know, we try so hard to please God with our ideas of what we think our God wants. We try to be who people think that we should be. We try to change ourselves. We try to bring about some kind of transformation in our own way. But Jesus says, if you're outside of me as the true vine and you're not connected to the source of, the, of life as the, as the branches, you can't do it. God offers something, us, something to us that only he can give us. Jesus meets our needs in a way that we have never experienced before because he truly reveals who God the Father is to us. The Bible tells us that Jesus himself said that the Father has entrusted everything to him, everything. As much as we want to change and be better, which is really not a bad thing, the best thing that we can do is allow Jesus to reveal the heavenly father to us so we can understand how we can enjoy God and how we can enjoy living for him because you know it's this beautiful invitation where Jesus says come he deals with what you're going through and then he shows you what rest looks like I mean what what could be better Jesus is calling us to stay connected to him and very easily as people what do we do with religion We try to do things our own way. We try to implement our own strategies. And we try to do this and that and this and that. And eventually what happens is we forget that we're supposed to come to Jesus first. And things really don't work out. Why would you want to do life without Jesus when that is what he offers you? When he offers you freedom. When he offers you burden-free transformation. It's the way that Jesus works. He invites us to go on a journey. He invites us where our hearts will change and we'll go on this process of transformation where we will see life differently, we will experience life differently, and we will be able to do everything that Jesus has in fact called us to do. He teaches us with a, with a gentle and humble heart and we become something completely new. Something completely new. We become truly rested. And we know that we, because we rest in God, we can enjoy all that God is all of his glory, all of his wonder, all of his majesty. We can have peace in the midst of a global pandemic because of the rest we find in Jesus. We can feel freedom even when as a church we actually can't meet on a Sunday. We can have hope and we can bring light to a very, very dark situation at any point in our lives because we know of this rest that comes from Jesus. 
and Jesus alone. And so having said all of this, how can we move from this place, whether you're in your living room, your bedroom, your bathroom, I hope not, but in a coffee shop, whatever, what is the next thing that you can do to actually live out this rest and to actually give Jesus your burdens and find him in this process of accepting the invitation? And so I've summed up a couple of things. The first thing is not a major game changer, but accept the invitation that Jesus offers. Accept the invitation that Jesus offers. What if at the beginning of 2020, you gave it all to Jesus? What if at the beginning of 2020, you stopped trying to carry more than you can handle and you hand it over to Jesus? You see, this invitation here is not for people who think that they're perfect. It's for people that know that they are struggling. And I don't think this invitation is a one-time thing. I think it is a continual thing where we run to Jesus continuously and we choose to pursue him. We accept the invitation and we lay down what we are carrying and we come to him and we find this rest. Jesus is calling out to you and he's saying, here I am. Let me see you through this. Let me guide you. Let me give you strength. Let me empower you. Let me encourage you. Let me show you what God is calling you to be, but also let me help you to find rest for your soul. Jesus wants you to accept his invitation. And what that means is actually coming to Jesus on a very practical level. If you have never given your life to Jesus, you need to give your life to Jesus. You need to come to Jesus and say, Jesus, I recognize you as my Savior and I confess you to be my Lord. I want to follow you. I want to run after you. I want to chase you and I want to pursue you. And I want to find this rest, Jesus, and I want to live a life with you. That's what accepting this invitation looks like for the person that doesn't follow Jesus. But also, if you've been following Jesus, whether it's been a year, a couple months, or many years, you can still accept this invitation today, and you can say, Jesus, I come to you. I'm still carrying things. We all still carry stuff. It's very difficult for us to let go of things. You can approach Jesus and say, Jesus, I'm going to lay this down before you, and I'm going to trust you. I'm going to trust you with my life so that you can find rest for your souls. The Bible tells us that if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and he rose from the dead, you're saved. Just like that, the Bible also tells us that anybody who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And so the amazing thing is if you, wherever you find yourself, if you call out to the name of Jesus right now, you're saved. Your eternal destiny is transformed and changed forever. You have confidence in the fact that when you eventually pass on from this world, you know exactly where you're going. You know exactly who you're going to spend the rest of eternity with when you choose to turn to Jesus. So why not start 2020 by accepting this invitation, by calling to Jesus and choosing Jesus? We have this tendency as people to take matters into our own hands. We have this tendency as people to grab what we've been given and take it for ourselves. Lay your burdens before Jesus. The things that are weighing your shoulders down, whatever that may look like, lay it before Jesus. Give it back to Him. Let go of the hurt. Let go of the pain. Come to Jesus. Approach Him. He will teach you gently and humbly. And he will show you what God is calling you to and just who God is. He wants to do that. And he is waiting patiently for you. What if your 2020, I keep on saying 2020, what if your 2021 was so different? He wants to give you real rest. Let God work because he wants to free you. Our resolutions can't save us. Our resolutions can't bring true healing. Jesus can, and he is calling you this morning to give it to him. The second thing is this. Set aside time to find God and rest. When we think rest, when we think of rest as people, we think of the Sabbath day or we think about having a day off. Now, historically, a Sabbath day would have been a full day of rest. The word for rested in Hebrew is, in fact, Shabbat, which means Rest, or and that's where we get our na- the name Sabbath from. We know that God created all that we we know for, in the first six days, 
We know in the creation story for the first six days, God spent time creating the earth and the heavens and the universe. And on the seventh day, he rested. Why? God is self-sufficient. God is perfectly infinite. God doesn't need to rest. God shouldn't have rested on that day, but he chose to rest. Why? A lot of people have things to say about a Sabbath and whether or not you can have a Sabbath, whether or not you can't, because of Jesus and Him coming, surely every day should be a day of rest. Um, some people say that, no, the Sabbath should be on a Sunday. Some people say the Sabbath should be on a Saturday. I'm not going to get into that. But you see, God chose to rest on the seventh day because He wanted to show us something. You see, you, one of the root meanings of Shabbat, you can translate from Hebrew to mean a celebration. God chose on the seventh day to rest, to marvel at what God himself had created. God doesn't get tired. He doesn't need anything to keep him going, but God chose on this day to marvel at his creation, to be like, wow, look at what I've created. Look at how amazing this is. Look at all these things. And there's a powerful principle here. To set aside time to find God and rest. Have a day where you come to Jesus and where you marvel at God, where you celebrate the good in your life, where you choose to enjoy the people around you and you choose to enjoy the gifts that God has given you. Do things that fill up your tank. Regardless of whether or not you believe that you should take a full Sabbath or a half Sabbath or whatever that looks like, my challenge to you and my take on the matter is give it a shot. If you have the opportunity to take a day where you can have a Sabbath day of rest, choose it and choose to rest in God and to marvel at God. In the same way that God created the heavens and the earth and He marveled on the seventh day, you can do the same thing. It can be a time where you create an environment and an atmosphere where you can enjoy God and you can delight in God and you can cultivate an attitude of looking at what God has done in your life and who God is calling you to be and just who God is and you just wonder and marvel and your soul will rest. Your soul will find rest. What if your 2020 resolution was, 2021 rather, what your resolution was to run to Jesus more instead of adding all these things to your to-do list that end up weighing you down? Jesus wants to free you from your burdens. He wants to walk with you and he wants to journey with you and he doesn't promise that things will get easier but he promises that you will live a life of meaning and of purpose a life where you'll be able to celebrate God and know Jesus completely and fully. So if you've never given your life to Jesus, if you've never given your life to Jesus, I wanna challenge you to do that this morning. Wherever you're at, whether you say, Jesus, I'm ready to start the year with you for the first time ever in my life, or whether you say, Jesus, I'm ready to try again. I'm gonna pray a prayer with you. Now, if you're with your family or wherever you find yourself, I want to challenge you and encourage you to pray with me. Make this prayer your own. Choose to say for 2021, your life is never going to be the same because you are choosing to accept the invitation that Jesus is calling you to. Of starting the year with Him, finding rest with God, finding satisfaction for your soul, and giving Him your burdens. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, I'm choosing to accept your invitation today. Today, I choose to make you the Lord of my life. Today, I choose to make you my Savior. I know that I'm a sinner, but I choose to put my faith in you. Holy Spirit, would you help me to follow Jesus? Would you help me to accept Jesus' invitation. Jesus, today I give you my life and I ask that you would come in and that you would make me new. And so Jesus, for everybody that prayed this prayer this morning, I pray that your grace would be enough for them, Jesus. I pray that you would grab hold of their hearts and that you would work something amazing in their lives, that you would change them and that you would transform them, that you would bring about something powerful in who they are. In your name, Jesus, I pray all of this. Amen. If that was you and you decided to give your life to Jesus today, I really want to challenge you to click on our connect card. The link should be popping up on the screen right now. Let us know. We want to have a conversation with you. 
We really would love to get to know you a little bit better, wherever you find yourself. Church, thank you so much um, for allowing me to spend some time with you. I hope to see you soon. Love you guys lots. See you when I see you. Cheers.